Nigeria will hold the our own dear native land. We have to sing it. Yes. Uh, Nigeria we hail the our own dear native land. The tribe and tongue may differ in brotherhood we stand. Nigerians all are proud to serve a sovereign motherland. Our flag shall be a symbol the truth and justice will in peace of battle honor and this we count as gain to hand on to our children a banner without stain verse 3 That's oh right. God of all creation grant this our world request help us to build a nation where no one is oppressed and so with peace and plenty, Nigeria may be blessed. Nigeria celebrates our 60th independence anniversary on the 1st of October 2020, exactly 60 years after gaining independence from British colonial masters. And to celebrate this day with us, we decided to interview one of those Nigerians who were there when it actually happened. He was about 14 years old at the time Nigeria gained independence. We are here in his house today to find out some of the fond memories he has of that occasion. And of course, we are going to make him sing that song, Nigeria, we hail the our national anthem before the present one we had. My name is Damlai Okola. You're watching our Independence Day special from Legit TV. Big shout out to Emmanuel Sodi, the man behind the camera, for bringing you this footage. I first of all say congratulations, Nigeria, at 60. It's great to be 60, diamond age. And that's very, very pleasant. Uh, Nigeria has come a long way, and we give glory to God. What are your fond, fond memories about that occasion when Nigeria gained independence and it was announced all over the country? Uh, fond memory will be that uh, I'm going 74. That means I am near 14 by the time Nigeria celebrated its independence anniversary on October 1, 1960. In fact, I was in standard six in the primary school, getting ready to leave the primary school. And so we were the frontliners of the set of children, school pupils, that the country gathered together to celebrate with. And the ones, they promised the future Nigeria, the Nigeria of tomorrow that is going to be pleasant, flowing with milk and honey, the Nigeria we held the of that time. So things were so good in those days. Things were really so good. Good in the sense that the population was manageable, the infrastructures were manageable, everything was literally okay. There was nothing to make anybody think that uh, it was not going to be able to radu for Nigeria. There, there, I mean, the dense spot. Uh, it is not El Dorado now, but so far, so good, as, just, uh, as I've just said. So far, so good. So I remember that um, we were the first in the school premises. We were taught the Nigeria anthem. Everybody learned the Nigeria anthem within the first, uh, the, the closing months to October. And we could sing it by heart. I can sing all the three verses now by heart. I was even rehearsing it yesterday. I said, do I remember this first anthem of Nigeria? And surprisingly, I sang all the three verses without looking at anything. I said, oh, the thing went down so well with all of us. So we were taught that. On the Independence Day, we went to the uh, to Tafabaliwa Square. That was the venue of the celebration. We had our stand for children. 
the dignitaries had their own, market women had their own, everybody had his own. And a um, lot of music, a lot of dancing, a lot of great speeches by the people at the end of affairs then. I can remember Namdi Azikwe speaking, and speaking big grammar. It was so interesting. I got back home that day, I met my, my father, a trader, who sent me to school. I said, what were they saying there? I said, ah, they said a lot too, but one cannot understand everything because the grammar was too big, one cannot understand it. My father said, no, stop that. One can understand it. They learned to know that one, so you should continue to learn. You will understand everything. So that was the hope everybody had, really. 60 years afterwards, you said that Nigeria gained independence to become a country that will be flowing with milk and honey. Do you, do you think that we're presently flowing with milk and honey, or what do you think? Where do you think we are present? Like I said at my opening remark, I am a, I'm, a, I'm an optimist. I really don't belong to the class of those who think that we have not got it. I personally don't belong to the class of those who think that Nigeria has not got it. We will just be comparing what Nigeria was 60 years ago with what it was now. And that comparison really don't exist. That comparison, it doesn't exist at all. In the sense that if at that time we said schooling was okay, yes, how many students? If we said that the schools were put in the nice shape, the hospitals were good. Yes, how many patients? What was the population of Nigeria then? So what I can say is that at that time, maybe what we had was commensurate with our population, was okay with our standard of living and of everybody's living. But as time went on, only that we will say the infrastructures refuse to grow proportionately with the growth in population. Otherwise, I think Nigeria has done so well, so far, so good. If at that time you had uh, 1,000 schools and there are only uh, 100,000, 100 million people, or how many will I say? How many are we now? About 120, over 200 now. If, we, if then we are 100 million, and we had 10,000 schools. Now we should have enough number of schools to cope with the 200 million that we are now. So what we had then was good for the population. What we have now is struggling to meet the need of the population because we are growing. One of the things that Nigerians are fond of right now is traveling outside the country. At the time, maybe after independence or before independence, uh, how much did people really want to travel outside Nigeria? You mean now? Then, at the time, wow. Did, uh, then too, people really wanted to travel outside the country. But then it was for education mainly. The rich people, those who could afford it, wanted their children to go abroad to do their university education. Whereas those that are not able to afford it, you stay back and manage whatever we had at home. And the standard was good, even at home. It was comparable to whatever they were getting outside the country. So that was the main focus for traveling at that time, for educational purposes. Nowadays, where people still want to travel to go and read abroad, but for those who can afford it. So the, the, the difference isn't so elaborate, isn't, isn't much. As much as people sought for education outside the country at that time, so now they still seek for education outside the country, even now. But one thing, in those days, if you read abroad and you came back, your certificate was measured, was tested against the standard in Nigeria because the standard was really very high and commensurate to those of the best in the outside world, in, in Britain and America at that time. In those days, if you came back with a degree from India, you are just wasting your time. Now people want to go even to Dubai to study, want to go to Ukraine to study and so on and so forth. It wasn't like that at that time. The focus were Germany, France, Britain, America. Okay. All those other countries were 
not comparable to the standard we had in Nigeria. The, the exchange rate of Nigeria to the pound was, was very funny. Funny in the sense that uh, one pound over there was about one pound here. Or was, was, the dollar was less than the Naira at that time. But now you know that uh, a Naira does not stand where the dollar stands. Okay, which of the administrations do you prefer? Do you prefer the military or the civilian? Which do you prefer out of both? Hmm. People are fond of saying that the military spoils the country. But I, for one, in 1969, when the one came on board, in fact, when the first military coup took place and everything became militarized, the government became military government. I was so happy, many people were happy, that this would be corrected, that discipline will go into governance and will go into even the followership. That was the expectation and that was how the thing first of all came out. Unfortunately, by the time the military left the place, maybe the, some of their top brass showed the populace how to enrich oneself. Many of them became stinkingly rich by the time they left. So the other administrations that have been coming seem to just follow that pattern that if you're in government, you can make it good. You can serve yourself, you can serve your own interest. And I don't see us getting out of that one too soon. Because even now, the military, in terms of uh, uh, serving the masses, and the civilian government, in terms of serving the masses, there has been no difference. It is people in power serving their own interests, first and foremost, and very little thing coming back to the populace. But did you think there, there was going to be, or there's going to be a time where Nigerian uh, Naira will be so low against the dollar and the British pound? Did you ever envisage that it was? Well, we didn't think so. We didn't think so. It was deteriorating from day to day. We never thought it was going to be as bad as it is now. Nobody, nobody ever thought so. Because they always showed us the granola pyramids, the cocoa in the west, this, the coal in the east, this, that. And that all these things were funny and changing us. But I don't know how it, how it went. I'm not an economist. Um, I, could, I could think that to get a car at the time would be very, very easy. How, how much did you get your first car and when was that? <laughs> uh, I was not so lucky. When I left the university in 1972, I was not one of those who were lucky to quickly have a car and have a good place and this and that. Because at that time, they were still selling folks who gym for about 90 pounds, 100 pounds. I didn't get my own car until 1977, whereas I left school in 72. That time I bought my dad soon 180k for 4,400 Naira. 4,400 Naira. Was it 4,000? I think it was 3,600. 3,600, that's 180K. Air condition, 3,600 Naira. Uh, <laughs> well, if you do, not, not many of us now in the, in the middle class in the country can aspire to go and buy a brand new car. Right. Aha. And the Tokuba, the British Rolls now sell in millions. So you can see the difference. Uh, that's part of the problem we have. It's not, it's not, it's not as easy as that time. But, but anyone could afford that car at the time. Was the person considered wealthy or just an average earner or a medium? If, if, you, if you qualify to have one that time, it was easy, you will get it. 
and either as a civil servant that will give, they will just give you your loan from the office as a civil servant, or working in the public uh, domain, or working in any company. You apply for your car loan and they give it to you straight away. It was so easy. And if you are not, if you are a trader, you work and you already got enough money, you know you can pump part of your money into making yourself comfortable for having a personalized car, then you go ahead and buy. It was easy. Who were some of Nigeria's best musicians at the time? I mean, Nigeria's top musicians. Okay. Yes. Ah. <laughs> uh, well, it was that those days were the days of high life music. There's Jim Lawson, Edio Konta, and when the Jew music grew gradually into lamb life. Uh, they were talking of uh, they were talking of some people before Ebenezer Obi and uh, Sonia Adi. There were some people before them, Adi Olu Akisonya, all those ones. Ebenezer Obi and uh, Sonia took the limelight. But about Gundi, we saw him both as an actor, then and as a musician, especially in the Yoruba parts of the, the country. Uh, Later, Fela came back and uh, made those of us who are used then to be very lively. And we enjoyed ourselves with Fela music in those days. Uh, in terms of Fela, I used to have almost all this album. The hmm. one that particularly caught your fancy. Hey, hey, hey. Fela had that song. And this Jem Koku was a hit. Jem Koku was a hit. Uh, um, <laughs> I don't sing his songs again. I'm not an old man. But I have so many of them. They are all so good. They are all so nice. They were all having a message, so to say. Which many of us did not realize then. But we begin to realize, even the country begin to realize many of the music of Fela now after his death. They were, they, were, they, were, they, were, they were gospels for the country. Yeah. Right. Um, I was thinking you would also sing the Nigeria We Hail the National Anthem, if you can remember it very well. Why, why, why would I? Why would I? I can sing Nigeria We Hail it because it, I can't remember the name of the person who composed it. They gave us all the history of the person who composed it. We have seen it many times. But it was a very well thought thousand anthem for the country then. When it was changed, many of us, even when it was changed, I can't remember when it was changed. Had I left school? Had I started to be a teacher? I don't know. We queried why it was changed, but uh, they had a good reason for changing it. Nigeria, we held the uh, own their native land. We want to sing it. Yeah. Uh, Nigeria, we held the. Our own the native land, the tribe and tongue may differ, in brotherhood we stand. Nigerians all are proud to serve our sovereign motherland. Our flag shall be a symbol, the truth and justice we in peace of battle honor, and this we count as gain. To hand on to our children, our banner without stain. Verse 3. O right. God of all creation, grant this our world request. Help us to build a nation where no one is oppressed. And so, with peace and plenty, Nigeria may be blessed. So, may God, may God bless all of us and bless the coming generation. Nigeria will not divide, Nigeria will not break up. I don't think we have anything to gain from breaking up. We just have to find the answer to our problems and continue to live in harmony. There is a lot of power in unity. God bless you.